Welcome to the Tad and Tatter Crochet and Tatting Podcast. My name is Stephanie and I'm coming to you from my home in Oregon. And this is a podcast all about crochet and knitting and all of the yarny things that I am doing. Whatever they happen to be. <laughs> whatever my fling is at the moment. Um, and this is episode 28. And I have a good amount of stuff to show you. I was completely unproductive for like two weeks and then I just got like a ridiculous amount of things done in the last week and have been working furiously um, and I'll explain a little bit about why I actually have time to do those things now so um, but first let's get into the yarn business um, I have technically I have five finished objects to show you three of them are small quick projects though um, so the first thing that I'll show you is the small things. So um, if you've been watching the last little while, you will know that I recently moved to Oregon. Uh, and it's cold here for my Southern California self. <laughs> um, and uh, Alexander, my son and I, walk the dog every morning. And it's, it's cold. There was one day where we went out. It was like 9 a.m. and it was still 30 degrees outside Fahrenheit um, and uh, yeah it was really cool <laughs> so I decided I wanted to make some headbands and I saw on um, the crochet circle podcast from Faye that she had just made a headband because she was going to Iceland I believe she just left um, to come home from Iceland she's she's on her way back and so I was like oh I'll try that pattern so I tried it and it's called the something I already forgot it's a free pattern on Ravelry and they have a, a blog post that gives you the the deets the details so the pattern is called the Minta hat headband ear warmer by hook of love uh, and it's uh, very simple and but it has nice texture so this is the first one that I made so I used um, Barocco vintage which is what this blanket is made out of this is the same yarn <laughs> so I had these leftovers and it's nice and warm it's an acrylic wool blend I think there might be some nylon in there or something too and um, so I made this one and I made it according to the pattern and it's a little, it was small. So I had to add rows onto the back cause it's worked back and forth and then you sew it together. And um, I'm not super happy with the way that it looks. Um, I like the pattern. I think the pattern is interesting. I like this little part in the front here, but I don't like that it had to be sewn. I don't really like sewing and seaming things together. Um, I'd much rather work on the round, but anyway, so this was a little small. So then I went up a hook size and I added four stitches, um, two on each side of the, the middle part there. So, and this fits much better, but I still didn't really like, you can tell I'm not very good at sewing things together and seaming. So, um, yeah. But this this fits much better and it's warmer although the thicker it is the more it like pushes my hair up and out so but that's just gonna happen with ear warmers no matter what so i like this one a little bit better and then i remembered that i had seen somebody post um and i'm in the um she used to be a little monkey's crochet now it's yarn and chai design so I'm in the Facebook group, and so when she released this pattern, everybody was like, oh, yeah, and then they made it. And then I saw somebody else post on Instagram about it recently, and I really liked the yarn that they used. And I was like, oh, that's pretty. So then when I remembered it, I was like, oh, I'll make one of those. So then I did this. So this is the Hope Ear Warmer 
from Yarn and Chai Design. And um, her pattern calls for a number three weight yarn, which is DK. And um, I wanted to use this um, Touch of Alpaca from Lion Brand, which is worsted. So I made the teen size instead of the adult size. And it's a little big, but I kind of like that because then it doesn't um, mess up my hair too much when I put it on. So, ta-da! And I think it's really cute with the little button. Um, it's a nice texture. Her patterns are free on her blog with ads. And then she sells ad-free versions for like $1.99. Or you can sign up for the, she calls it the All Access Pass. And that gives you just free access to all of her patterns for life if you pay for the pass, which I think is like 20 bucks. So that's what I've done. And so I have made a million of her patterns. This is, I keep forgetting that I'm on my computer and it's reversed. <laughs> but so this is um, one of her patterns too. This is the Henry, Henry's baby blanket. And then I've made a bunch of her scarves and shawls and stuff. Her stuff was some, one of the first things that I, uh, her patterns were some of the first ones that I crocheted. So yeah, and I really like the pattern and the design. It's nice and simple. Um, it works up quick and it's done in joined rounds. And then you just put the button over the join so that you can't really see it. Um, and it's really cute. I like it a lot. So this is the one that I've really been wearing to go walk the dog because it fits a little bit better. It's really cute. So yeah. Oh, and the colors for these, this is oatmeal. And then this is, I think this is called Royal Blue or something along those lines. It's in my Ravelry. I made a project page for, these are on the same one. And then this has its own project page. So yeah, that's three whole finished objects because I was working on this uh, cowl, which I'll show you next. Um, and I was like, I need to actually finish something really quick. Um, also encouraged by Faye, because she was talking on her podcast about when people lose their crojo, <laughs> their crochet mojo, or knitting mojo, or whatever you want to call it. And um, that one of the things you can do to help with that is to... Um, do small projects so you can finish something and feel accomplished in finishing something and apparently it worked because then I just finished things like nobody's business so <laughs> yeah and these worked up very quickly I made th three of them in like two days and that's with having a baby so I think that's pretty good <laughs> yeah finish objects yay so yeah small things out of the way so that I can show you the other stuff that I finished and so this is one of them I don't know if you can hear but I have the baby monitor on because Alexander is supposed to be sleeping upstairs. We're sleep training. And so he's at his nap time and he does this thing, which apparently a lot of babies do, where they pick their legs up and then like slam them down <laughs> onto the bed or in his, his crib. And so he's been doing that and like talking. And as long as he's not crying, I don't care. He can sleep. He can not sleep. The point is that he's in his crib during nap time. So anyway, so this is a cowl. <laughs> um, I can't remember. Did I show this to you last time? I can't remember. I'm going to start from the top of the story of this one because I really don't remember. Anyway, so I think I did because I think I remember showing you the, the yarn. But anyway, the story of this cowl <laughs> is that uh, I had started a pattern. It's called the Dainty Dots Cowl by Molly Klein Design um, when I was still pregnant, I think. So it was a while ago. And I went to go pick it back up because I just wanted to finish it. And it just like slip slip knits and all that kind of some yarn overs because it has dainty little dots and has little um, eyelets. That's what I'm looking for. And I was starting to work on it again and I was like, you know what? My brain can't handle this right now. I just need an easy project. I think I told you last time I was thinking about doing like a tube scarf or something to just get back into knitting. And um, this ended up being that. So I ripped that out and just um, 
start it again. So I cast on, I originally cast on like 200 stitches and then realized it was twisted like five rounds in. So I had to pull it out. And then I ended up casting on 172 stitches because I was doing a long tail cast on and my tail just wasn't long enough. Um, so I got to like 170 and was running out of tail. And I was like, what is a multiple of four that's near 170? And that's 172. And I need a multiple of four because I wanted to do a two by two ribbing. So yeah, so I cast on 172 stitches and then I did 10 rounds of two by two rib. And then I just knit in the round to do a stockinette. And then I kept going until I did not want to do it anymore. <laughs> and then I did uh, another 10 rounds of the two by two rib and then just bound off. Um, so yeah, and the yarn is um, from Junk Yarn and the color is called Sally Ride. It's a, just a sock base, a 75% superwash, 25% nylon, but I really like the colors. And it didn't really pool. You can see some of the blue pooled a little bit. But I think it's really pretty. And it has a nice drape to it. It smells fantastic because I got some soak, the celebration scent, which I really like. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I finished this. And I told you that, see, okay, I did talk about this because I wanted to finish this and then I wanted to finish Alexander's sweater before I started anything new. I wanted to get some whips out of the way. So I was very motivated. Um, so yeah, so I finished this and um, then I worked on Alexander sweater, which is my next finished object. So uh, I hope that'll do. I can't tell it off. Ooh, is it? Is it? <laughs> I had a phone meeting at work the other day, so I just worked on it while I was on the phone meeting because it was just me sitting in my office by myself <laughs> on the phone. And so uh, all I had left to do, I, it, was, it was this sleeve. I was like here. And so I just had this much sleeve to finish. And I looked at my Ravelry. I started working on this thing in February and I got most of it done in February, March. Um, because I was doing it at midnight at, um, sorry, go away software update. Um, and it was getting help from Amanda, who is the co-owner of Make One Yarn Company in Laverne, California. If you're ever in town, go there. It's an amazing shop. And so she was helping me. And so I was working on it there until I got most of it done. And then I just put it down. And then Alexander was born in June. And then I just didn't touch it again <laughs> until like a week ago um so yeah so I finally finished the sleeve and then I blocked it and it grew like it almost doubled in size in blocking um and I had been planning on him wearing this Thanksgiving because my mom's side of the family has a Christmas party that's Saturday after Thanksgiving every year um because they know everybody's going to be in town um and so I'd wanted him to wear it there, but I'll put in a picture. Um, it's a little big on him. <laughs> so that's not going to happen. But I have a whip to solve that problem. So anyway, uh, the pattern is called the L Wood. Uh, it's from the Old Man Sweater Collection from Jenny Weeby? Wade? Wade? Wee? Why? Be? It's W I E B E. And I think I'd mentioned this before when I first started working on this, but I couldn't purchase the pattern on Ravelry. It wouldn't let me. So I had to go to love crochet or love knitting.com. Love crochet and love knitting are the same thing. Um, and purchase it that way. But um, it's a paid for pattern. And then I did make the 18 month size. So this is actually an 18 month size and Alexander is only fitting into six to nine month stuff. So I should not have expected it to, to fit him at all. Um, so I'm not mad about it, but um let me button it up. Oops, so, well, actually, I'll just put in pictures. I'll put in pictures. But yeah, you can see it has a really cute um, ribbed collar. And obviously, it's a cardigan. And it's just really cute. I like it a lot. I can't wait for him to actually fit into it. Maybe next Christmas. <laughs> he will be 18 months at next Christmas. So um, the yarn is Malabrigo Rios, which is a worsted weight superwash. 
and the colors are Ravelry Red, which I think is hilarious, and Gris, which is I think is Spanish for gray. So I was a little worried that I was going to run out of the gray, and we had actually, when I was working on it at the yarn shop and trying to figure out if we could get more of it, and it was like impossible to get more. Um, but that ended up being okay, because even after sewing on the buttons, I still had this much left. Hmm. And then I've got this much of the Ravelry Red left, so my mother-in-law was like, well, bring it at Thanksgiving, I'll make a hat. So, I'm totally going to do that. I'll let her make a hat to go with this sweater. So yeah. Ta-da! I really like it. I think it's really cute. Um, the pattern... Um, was a little confusing because it has it goes everything from like zero to adult extra large and so it was a little hard to read sometimes um, but the pattern itself was good and it was um, makes a really cute sweater so there you go he seems mildly irritated he's still not crying so yeah I like it a lot and I like the the garter band too. I think that's cool. Okay, so that's all of the finished objects. Uh, and then I will show you my clip. I think he's gonna fall asleep. So it's 40 minutes left. Sometimes he's got to whine a little bit before he falls asleep. Um, but yeah, so anyway, the sleep training is why I've actually had time to work on stuff because now he sleeps better at night, so I don't have to go to bed with him at 7.30. <laughs> and I can stay up and actually work on stuff, and then he takes specific designated naps during the day, so he sleeps at least three hours during the day, um, or at least he's down for a nap at least three hours a day. So I've actually had time to work on stuff. And because it's the weekend right now, today's Sunday, I've had an inordinate amount of time to work on things. And uh, Disney Plus just came out. And if you've been watching this podcast for any period of time, you know that I'm a Disney person. And so all we have been doing is sitting at home and watching Disney movies, which is amazing. And I love it. My husband was asking me, he was like, what are you going to do when you run out of movies? I was like, watch them again. <laughs> So yeah. So yeah, see? Disneyland mug. Gotta love it. <sighs> so, um, because I've had so much time to work on things, I decided that since the Elwood sweater wasn't going to fit Alexander for the Christmas party, that I would just make him a different sweater. So a new yarn shop opened up here in town, in Salem, um, called Wild Knits. And they actually had their grand opening this weekend. So I went on Friday and specifically worked for yarn to make a flax sweater. So um, the flax sweater is from Tin Can Knits and it's from their like beginner easy knit collection. Um, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. And I know a bunch of people who've made it. I've seen it on Instagram and people have made it and I've watched their podcasts and stuff. And it uses worsted weight yarn, so it works up really quickly. So I found at Wild Knits some Cascade Superwash 220. Uh, and this is the color Ruby. So this is perfect, because a lot of the yarn that they had at this shop was not Superwash, which is a lot of organic stuff. So I think that's Superwash isn't an organic. <laughs> so... Um, which is great, and I appreciate that, but I'm not knitting something for a baby that is not super washed, because if you saw that blue sweater, you know that I cannot be trusted with not super washed yarns for baby stuff. So um, I grabbed this, and it's absolutely perfect. And so I started with flax. I started this on Friday afternoon. It is now Sunday early afternoon. I haven't worked on it today because we went to church this morning. Um, and I am almost done with the body. Yay! So this is, yeah, this is the flax. So it's a top-down raglan pullover, and it has a garter panel on the 
sleeves. So it's really cool and super quick, clearly. I'm doing the six to nine month size because um, that'll, it should be like half an inch to an inch worth of positive ease for Alexander's current size. It was really funny. I put him down on the couch and I was just like measuring tape all over the baby. He was like, nah. <laughs> he was having a good time with it. Um, that was a good sound, not a bad sound. I realized when I did that, it probably sounded like he was crying, but he was not. He was fine with it. Um, so, uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm two rows into the ribbing on the bottom. And then I'm going to work the sleeves. I unfortunately will have to do the sleeves in DPM because DPNs, because I have the right size DPNs. I don't have the right size circulars to do either two circulars or magic loop, which I have not done neither of those things, but would love to learn because I need DPNs. After finishing the, the Elwood sweater on DPNs, I'm like, oh God, I hate DPNs, but it should work out pretty quickly. Cause I'm doing a smaller size and it's worse to weight yarn. Um, it's a little, it's not super soft right now, but I understand that it um, softens up a lot when you wash it and I will block it. I don't think I'm going to put it in the washing machine the first time. I'll actually block it, block it so that if I have to stretch it out, I can a little bit. And also because I want him to wear it once before I potentially ruin it in the washing machine. <laughs> and I, would have enough time to make him another one before the Saturday after Thanksgiving, but I don't want to have to. So, but I absolutely love, love this pattern. It's super easy. If you've never knit a sweater before, um, this is the pattern to start with. Like I made all of these, but I could never have done this without help of like picking up stitches and doing the collar and doing the uh, ribbing. Like I messed up massively on this, um, at one point I ended up with like reverse stockinette because I still don't completely understand knit stitches, honestly. And so Amanda at Make One had to fix it. And so you can see like she couldn't completely fix it. It got messed up, but it's underneath the collar where it rolls so you'll never see it. But um, this one, you could have just started learning how to knit. And as long as you know how to knit and purl, you're good to go. And I also, um, was using this to practice and to learn how to do, um, I'm going to forget what it's called now. Start with an N. It's a different kind of pearl. Is it Norwegian pearl? Am I losing my mind? I am getting more sleep, but because I still have baby brain. I think it's called Norwegian Pearl. You all are like probably screaming at the, whatever it is you're watching this on, being like, yes, it's Norwegian Pearl. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> it's Norwegian Pearling, um, which is um, good for crocheters because I knit continental, so I hold my yarn in my left hand um, cause that's what I do when I'm crocheting. So why learn how to do something completely different? And, and so the Norwegian pearl, you don't have to put your yarn to the front in order to do the pearl stitch and O M G is it so much easier. And, um, I think people who are used or who knit first and learned how to pearl, um, the normal way, it might be weird because you have to, you do a lot more finagling with your right hand if you're right-handed um but it feels perfectly natural to me as a crocheter so it's perfect and it's made this go by so much faster if I had to do regular pearls and especially when I get to the dpns for the the sleeves for the garter panel I'm gonna really appreciate Norwegian pearling so there we are it's great and I love it and I'm thinking about doing like an app a crochet applique like a Christmas tree or a snowman or something Christmas tree maybe or um or even like some holly leaves or something since it's a Christmas sweater and right now it's just a plain red but I also have a really cute um like collared button-up 
onesie thing for Alexander that would fit him that could go underneath it. So if it has like an interesting collar, then that might be enough to make it uh, interesting. And I, I'm doing all of this to show off. <laughs> Alexander's going to be the only baby at the Christmas party, and so everybody is going to be hanging out with the baby, and I want him to be wearing something that I made <laughs> so that I can say, I made that, and everybody can go, ooh. <laughs> but at least I can admit that about myself. So yeah, it's good. I also did, um, for this I got some new needles, because um, I wanted to try, um, I had explained to you I wanted to try Chiaogu's, and I'll t when I show you my next almost whip, you'll understand where the problem lies. Um, but so I had to get, I wanted to get some new needles. So I'm at Wild Knits, the new shop. She sells Addies and, and Knitter's Pride, but I decided to go with the Addies. So these are Addy Rockets. And so these are a size eight. And I don't, I thought I had a size six on a 16 inch circular, but I don't. So I've been doing the ribbing with the eights. Um, so it's a little loose, but it also needs to get over a fat baby head, so I think that's okay. And then I do have size, size 6 DPN, so I'll do the, the arm ribbing in a size 6 so that it stays on his hands better, so he's not um, getting it into things, mostly his mouth. So <laughs> This will get baby drilled on the second it goes on his body. But that's okay, because it's watchable. So yeah, I really enjoyed the Addy Rockets. I like them a lot. I still want to try the Chiagus, but these have been working for now. And this has been living in my um, Grinch bag, which is what this was in, because I don't have all of my bags up in Oregon yet. They're still down in California, so I <laughs> just have to rotate them. Um, so yeah. So then I have a half whip. Um, by that I mean I got everything ready. I just haven't started it yet, because I wanted to finish that sweater first. And so... Um, that is in this lovely um, um, unicorn bag, which I forget what was in here. Something you've seen recently. And so this is the brioche pattern that I wanted to do. So I didn't print out the first page, but I showed you the picture of it last time. It's the Croyel, I don't know how, if that's how you pronounce it, um, cowl, which is a... Project sets in my queue. Uh, it's a brio. It's a Nia Brit a Brit knit brioche. <laughs> I can speak words. Um, it's a two color brioche. So this is what the it looks like on Ravelry, and it is mildly blown out, but also the picture that she has. Oh, it's a text from my husband. Um, is also a little bit blown out, but yeah. So it's a two color brioche cowl. And it's um, long, so you can wrap it twice. And um, the yarn that I'm using, I showed you. I got this at Oregon Flock and Fiber. Um, it's a from a local sheep farmer. And they don't spin it, but it is their yarn, and they dye it as well. Or it's their sheep. It's their wool. And then they dye it. Um, so this is a... Deboule uh, is the type of sheep. Deboule and then Tessa silk, which is the, just the type of silk. So it's a 50-50 fingering weight base. It's from Shaggy Bear Farms. And uh, this is for the red. And apparently it cost me $23.50. So this is the yardage for the red. So it's 2.6 ounces and 290 yards. It's about 75 grams. And then the green is 6.4 ounces and 717 yards, which probably cost me $57.75. And um, so obviously I'm not going to be using all of this green because um, this is going to be my cast on, my main color. So I'm going to cast on in the green and then do the initial rows in the green and then the final rows and the bind off in the green. Um, but then it's going to be with this like, and this is like a forest green. It's coming up pretty true to color from what I'm seeing. And then like a cranberry red. So it's just once I start running out of the red, I'll be done. Because I can make it as 
um, tall as I want it. Um, so yeah, so I had told you that I had ordered from Jimmy Bean's Wool um, some Chiaogu needles to make this with because I wanted to try them. And I did order said needles, uh, but what I had done, which I have done before, so I don't know why I did it again, was read the pattern incorrectly. So I read that there are 3.5 millimeter needles, which is a size four, on an 80 inch cable. They don't make 80 inch cables, which should have been my first clue. Um, so I ordered a 60 inch cable, and then I got here and I was like, this is really long. So I double checked the pattern. It's an 80 centimeter cable, <laughs> which is a 32 inch cable in standard uh, measurements. So <laughs> I now have size fours on a 60 inch cable, which I'm sure will be good for something one of these days. The needles were only 10 bucks. But my whole plan of trying Chiaogu's went out the window because I didn't have enough time to order another set, although they come really fast. So I just went ahead and got at Wild Mitts when I was there on Friday, um, so another set of Addies. So these are Addy Rockets, size four on a 32 inch cable made in Germany. Um, yeah, see, 80 centimeter. <laughs> Anyway, so as soon as I finish Alexander's flax sweater, I'm going to start on this brioche pattern. And that was why I was practicing the Norwegian purling, because there's a lot of purling in brioche, apparently. And I think it'll make that cowl go a lot faster, because I would also like to finish this and be able to wear it for the um, Christmas party. So, fingers crossed. We leave this weekend for LA, and then we're going... Uh, the following Monday to DC to hang out with my in-laws for Thanksgiving. And so I probably won't really have to hold the baby because <laughs> my in-laws will be there. And then my aunt-in-law and my grandmother-in-law and my, um, you know, the family. So they'll all be all over the baby and I won't have to take care of him as much, which will be nice because I love him dearly. But he's a lot of work. So it'll be nice to just sit and knit and let other people hold the baby. Um, and we're feeding him solids now. He eats rice cereal, so I don't have to feed him as much, like breastfeed him as much. He's becoming an independent little baby, which is both sad and awesome. I think that's just parenthood in general, is it's both wonderful and terrible all at the same time. <laughs> um, but it's been good. And because he's sleeping through the night, I don't, I, I just, I just feel better. <laughs> the last night was the first night that I have not had to feed him in the middle of the night for like six weeks. And it was amazing because he still woke up and like made noise and kicked his feet and did all that kind of stuff. But he didn't um, need to eat. And he only cried for like five minutes once. So good time. Uh, side note, if you are a parent of a small child, the sleep easy solution is the sleep training method that we're using. Because it's like a gentle sleep training there's this, there's the whole ferberizing method where you basically just lock them in a room and let them cry. And uh, I wouldn't be able to handle that. And there's no evidence to suggest that it's more effective, apparently. So we're doing like a gentle sleep training where you let them cry for a couple minutes and then you go check on them, make sure they're okay, and give them some reassurances that you're there and you love them and everything's going to be fine. And then you kind of keep doing that until they learn how to self-soothe and, and put themselves to sleep. And it's worked amazingly. I mean, he was already sleeping through the night until he hit four months and they go through this like developmental thing. And so he stopped sleeping through the night and it was making me exhausted and crazy. And so when he wasn't growing out of it and he hit five months, I was like, oh, okay, we're going to try something else. And my friend who just had her second baby was like, you should try this. So I read the book and it made a lot of sense. So yeah, the sleep easy solution. What was it by? Completely digressing, by the way. This has nothing to do with yarn. Has anything to do with being a parent, which is my life now, which is great. I love it. Uh, the sleep easy solution. The exhausted parent's guide to getting your child to sleep from birth to age five uh, by some doctors. <laughs> your child psychologists. Um, and apparently they run like some kind of child sleep center in Los Angeles and they cater to the stars, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about any of that. I care that their stuff actually made sense. And then it ended up working. So it only took two nights. 
it helps that I have one of the easiest babies I've ever had in my life. Just saying. Okay. I'll take it. Makes me terrified to have another one, though. Because <laughs> there's no way we're going to get this lucky twice. <laughs> ah. So, yes. So, those are my quips. I am being true to my being monogamous. Only one project of each craft. Like, if I wanted to start a crochet project, I would. I don't, because I want to finish these before the Christmas party. Um, but... You can stay over here, actually. But so I'm not going to start that, the brioche knitting, until I finish the sweater, which, if I play my cards right, will be by the end of today, potentially tomorrow, because I don't have to go to work tomorrow. I don't work. I don't go into the office on Mondays. I work. I just don't go into the office. So I can sit at home and work on it while, while we all hang out and watch some more Disney Plus. <laughs> <sighs> So I do have some other stash acquisitions stash away to show you. And I got the Cascade 220. Also, this yarn, at least at this particular yarn shop, was only $11 a ball. So that's going to be like a 15-ish dollar sweater, which is super exciting. Other than my time, of course. But for the yarn. So I also had to buy, of course, something fancy for myself. <laughs> um, because I thought that sleep training was going to be really hard. And I was like, oh, I should treat myself so that I <laughs> feel a little bit better. And then it was really easy. I treated myself anyway. Um, so I walked around the shop. And the shop was mostly commercial stuff. But it was like higher end um, commercial stuff. And was still a lot of wool and wool blends and those kinds of things. Um, and I was walking around. And then I saw these. <laughs> So these are from Blue Sky Fibers, which I've never seen before, but they're some kind of commercial yarn company. Um, does it say where they're from? Made in Peru. Anyway, but um, it's all natural color, no dyeing, all that kind of stuff. And these are their Metallico collection which is a 50% baby alpaca, 50% silk. So you can imagine how soft these are. They're so soft. So, so soft. <laughs> these are 50 gram skeins of sport weight, so you get 147 yards. Um, this color is called platinum. So yeah, it's like, it is like actually like a shiny, because um, of the silk, a shiny silver. And then this one, the tag fell off, but this is called opal. So again, like a shiny white. And then this is called gold dust. Um, so it's like a light tannish gold color. And there were more colors, but this is this really expensive yarn. So I stuck with three skeins because I was already a little pricey. Um, but again, I was treating myself. And I haven't bought yarn since Block and Fiber. So I felt pretty good about it. Um... So yeah, so I'm going to use these to make something. I think these would make a really pretty, like, lacy crochet something. I may even see um, Hannah's new pattern. Not the Vanya Cal, the, the other one. That's like a handkerchief that you seam in the back. I might look at that pattern and see if I can use that yarn for that. We'll see, because I think it'd be really pretty. It's something that's it's like super drapey and it's because it sits so close up to your neck it'd be nice to have it because it's so soft but I love it so much mm. um so yeah and I think I don't know what order I would do them in mm. I like that white gray brown so soft just like that so soft So yeah, so there are those, and then of course I bought the needles, and yeah, that's everything that I'm working on. Like I said, we're going to be going to back east for the holidays, for Thanksgiving, and we're going to be gone for two weeks, and so it'll be a while before I see you all again, but it should be nice, and I should be able to get a bunch of stuff done. I am going to take my... I think this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my Akiko shawl so I can finish that. 
And then I have yarn from, um, I think it's from Long Dog, Long Dog Yarn Company that I bought and I started a sweater last Thanksgiving when I was at my in-laws and I got like two or three rows into it and I didn't touch it again. So I think what I'm going to do, that's a DK and I'm going to do a swatch and see what size I would need to do, but I'm going to make a flax because it's so easy and I feel really confident that I could make a flax for myself. Um, I just have to figure out my gauge so that I can figure out what size to do since it's not worsted. And I was thinking about holding the DK double because that's basically worsted, but I think it would be prettier because it's a slightly speckled yarn to do it just straight. So I'm going to try that. And I think those are going to be the two things that I take with me and maybe one or two other small projects in case I need something small or in case I finish, what are the odds that I'm going to finish a sweater and a shawl in two weeks? Kind of slim, even though someone else will be taking care of the baby most of the time. <laughs> um, so yeah. He did fall asleep, by the way, like, I don't know, like 15, 20 minutes ago. So yeah, um, I think I'm going to have a good amount of stuff to show you when we get back, but that won't be till like the middle of December because Thanksgiving is really late this year. So it's, it's the very end of the month. And then we're staying another week after that. And then it's Christmas. Mm. <laughs> Luckily, I don't think anybody expects anything handmade from me because that's probably not going to happen. I'll make Adam the hat from that alpaca yarn that I got at the San Diego yarn crawl. And that might be it. <laughs> I didn't hand make something for my mom last year because what I wanted to make her was just going to take forever and I didn't get a chance to finish it. So I may make her something since she didn't get something handmade last year. And I found a poncho pattern that I think she would really like. So maybe I'll do that for her, but we'll see. Oh, and I did want to show you. I told you last time that my mother-in-law brought some sweaters with her when she came. That she made for Alexander. So I wanted to show them to you. So there's this one. Which is really cute. If you remember, that blanket is in California. Um, this is the same yarn from a blanket that she made for him. So it's a cotton wool blend. I think this is super cute. And this is about an 18 month. This is about the same size as the the Elwood. I'm, I call it his old man sweater because it looks like something a, an old man would wear. It's like kind of a Mr. Rogers kind of sweater. So there's that one. And I don't know the patterns for any of these. Don't worry. And then there's this one. I think this might be a Gramps. I don't know. It's a sweater, um, but there's this one. This one's a little bit smaller. I would say this one's probably like a 12 months. And it's a gorgeous, like burnt orange color. Yeah, because this one, this one is raglan. This one is top down raglan. And then this one is, you do the pieces. And then she actually kitchenered the top together so you can't, you can barely see where the two pieces meet. Um, she used to make a lot of socks, so she knows how to kitchen. <laughs> I do not know how to kitchen her, and I don't know that I want to learn. At least not right now. Anyway, so this is really cute, too, and I love the little pockets. And apparently the pockets were a really cool technique, too. She was showing me that she was making it, because they're not sewn on. They're actually um, part of the, like, you knit the pocket while you're knitting the sweater, and then you, you knit it together. So, yeah, it's really cute. And he should fit into this. This one he'll fit into relatively soon. The other one, probably not as much. Because he's five months, a little over five months now. And uh, it's fitting into six to nine month stuff. So, yeah, baby sweaters, they're so cute. And if I can get away with it, if I, if making myself a flax ends up not taking too long, I'll probably make my husband one too. I'll let him pick out the color. Um, Cause also if this cascade washes up really nice and it's nice and soft, I can make him something out of that. Cause he also was going to need super wash. He 
because men. So, <laughs> and I, I don't know that I would make a sweater in anything other than superwash because I don't want to have to hand wash a sweater every single time you wear it or every couple of times you wear it, you know, depending on how sweaty you get or how much baby bark you get on yourself. So, and then also the gas game is only $11 a ball. So to make a, a dull size sweater out of this would not be too expensive. Um, Cause I don't have a lot of sweater size quantities of hand-dyed yarn, and um, I don't plan on buying any anytime soon because I don't need more yarn. So, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> so yeah, so I mean, I basically gave you a life update too. Things are going well. We're um, sleeping better, so everything is better about life. And then just sitting around watching a lot of Disney Pixar movies. Um, I'm a classic like Disney Pixar person, so we've watched all of the classic ones. I don't think I've watched like Snow White or Sleeping Beauty yet. Those are older. They're not nearly as entertaining as some of the slightly more newer ones, because you know I'm a '90s, early 2000s kid. So um, like Aladdin, Pocahontas, and Robin Hood, and all that kind of fun stuff. And then of course all the Pixar. We're in the middle of the Toy Story series, and I'm sure they'll release the fourth one soon. It just came out on DVD. So I haven't seen that one yet, because um, we didn't go see it when it was in theaters, obviously. So, you know, baby. It's expensive to go to the movies when you have a baby. Um, but yeah, and then the holidays are coming, and that should be really nice. Um get to spend some time with family. We're going to go stay with my grandmother for a while. And my sister who moved to Florida is going to be up in Virginia for the holidays. So we'll actually get to see her and her kids, which is really nice because I haven't seen them for a while. So it should be good. And, uh, we'll come back and then it'll be Christmas. When did that happen? Where has my life gone? <laughs> it really is true that your life goes by faster the older you get. And then once you have a kid, it's like, Time is a construct. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> uh, which I'm fine with. Works for me. So yeah, so it'll probably be, you know, middle of November, probably a good month before I see you all again, but I should have some fun and exciting things to show you. Um, there are a couple of crochet alongs that are going on that I don't, or make alongs. I don't know that I'm going to do any of them, but... Um, um, Kalisha of the Quirky Monday Craft Cast just announced she's doing a Mr. Grinch along, so green stuff, Grinch-related things until the end of the year. Um, Faye is doing some um, crochet and make-alongs uh, for a Crochet Circle podcast. If you go check them out on Instagram, you can see those things. Um, I don't, I haven't really been entering crochet or make-alongs because I don't want to win anything. <laughs> like I don't want more stuff <laughs> in my house, um, especially because we were moving and everything. But um, it's always fun to go see what people are making and to participate and all that kind of fun stuff. So, um, and of course, Hannah from Cozy Cottage Crochet is doing her Year of the Sock 2019. So there's still a little bit of time left in that one if you're making socks. So yeah, I may do some like Christmas cast on stuff because that sounds like fun. And maybe I'll finally make a sock or something. Maybe. I make no promises. But I'm having fun trying new things in knitting. So. Anyways. But yeah. So if you want to find me online. You can find me on Ravelry as Tatted Tatter. And I'll put a link to my projects page. Because I try to take very detailed notes. And like weigh my yarn. So you know how much I use. And all that kind of stuff. For my projects. And I actually have pictures up for my recently finished uh, projects. Still no pictures of my Ariana cardigan because I just haven't had the opportunity to have somebody else take pictures of me in it. And I left it in California because it's too cold to wear it in Oregon right now. Um, and then you can find me on Instagram as the tatted tatter. Uh, and I hope to see you on the interwebs. If you have any questions or comments related to the podcast, you can email me at the tatted tatter ca at gmail.com. 
and I will see you in a month. So I hope you all have a great day and a great week and a great uh, Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving and otherwise just a generally wonderful November. <laughs> and I will see you all soon. Bye. <laughs>